All right, today we're going to start a series of lectures on inequality. Inequality is very common in the elementary mathematics, in the test and the you know, AMC and other mathematical competitions. Of course, we're going to start from the basics, right? So when we talk about inequality, sometimes we start with very fundamental, which is for real numbers, because you have the ordering, right? That only makes sense for real numbers. You can compare you know, which number is bigger. Is the number positive or is negative, right? So there's some fundamental property about, you know, a number, you know, if positive number, when they add up together, it's going to be a positive. You know, you're going to multiply it together, it's going to be positive. And also another common property is that uh, when you have a number squared, is always long negative. Okay, even if it's a negative number, because negative time, times negative is, uh, is a positive. So, so it's always, this is a very useful property here. And another one is absolute value. You know, that and has interpretation that um, in a, a real number, you know, that measures the distance of that particular position on the number line to the origin, right? So it's always long negative. And there is what is called the triangle uh, uh, property for uh, absolute values. You know, x absolute value plus y is going to be no greater, than, uh, I mean, no smaller than x plus y's absolute value, right? And sometimes it's also useful to know that if a number is positive but it's smaller than 1, if it's square it, it's going to be smaller. It's getting smaller because it times something less than 1, right? So all these are very fundamental. I assume you all know this, right, from probably elementary school. Right. However, you know they're gonna come in different shapes. You know when you dealing with uh, some problems, or okay, not straightforward at times. All right. Today we're gonna look at a few examples, a non-trivial example, I would say. All right. So here, why don't you uh, read the problem, pause the video, try to solve it yourself first. Okay. So here we say that a, of course, all numbers are real numbers here. Right. A. Is greater or equal to b x greater or equal to w, uh, y. We want to prove that x plus b y is uh, uh, greater or equal to uh, a y uh, plus uh, b x, right? So um, when you're ready, come back and continue the video. Okay. So here now, in order to prove this is what we want to prove, right? So alternatively, we want to prove equivalently say if you move this to the left hand side you know you, you what you want to prove is ax plus by minus ay minus bx is greater or equal to zero right so when you think about these terms you probably want to combine the like terms right so here you have uh, an x Right, and you have a minus b, so let's do that. So combine them together, a minus b x, right? And then for the y, you combine them, but b minus a, right? So plus b minus a times y, you want to prove this, right? This is equivalent, you know, or this thing is equivalent. Now, now maybe it's clear because a minus b and b minus a is common factor except for negative sign, right? So this is equivalent to the other one. So a minus b common factor is going to be x minus y greater or equal to zero. But we're given this, right? So positive, positive is going to be positive. So that is given, right? So because since we're given here, you know that a minus b must be non negative and x minus y must be greater or equal to zero. Multiply them together, it, they're going to do this, and then you go step by step, you know, we can mm, the proof, okay? So this is just a simple algebra, but with the fact that uh, positive number times positive number uh, is going to be positive number, right? So that's, uh, that's a proof, okay? Let's look at the second example. Here, x, y are real numbers. We want to prove that uh, x squared plus x, y plus y squared greater 
or equal to zero. All right. So this is almost x plus y squared, but instead of two x y, this is one x y. Or right. So how do we uh, prove that? Okay. So here you probably want to use the fact that uh, you know any quantity when you square it is going to be non-negative, right? So this is this is a property we want to use. Um, but how do we do that? So maybe we can get something square, complete the square. So if you use these as a expression in x, right? Y would be the constant. So if you complete square in terms of x as a variable, what you get is you're going to x plus half of y, right? Half of y square, right? And then you're going to plus because here what you what you get if you expand it out this you're going to have x square plus you know two times one half x y right which is x y plus one fourth of y square but we have y square here so you need to pass three fourths of y square and now we're done this is a square this is greater or equal to zero this is positive this is greater or equal to zero positive plus positive is going to be positive so we are done all right so here we prove it by utilizing this one right and also a positive number add up, add up together is also still a positive number the trick here is uh, complete the square all right so there's another way of doing this okay let's call this quantity uh, let me see t and Another way, which is uh, probably, um, you say, okay, this is almost x plus y squared, right? But then you have to subtract x y, yeah. Or t equal maybe x minus y squared, but then you have the plus three x y, right? So you because this is x plus y x minus one square is something you're familiar with and they're missing something you compensate that but how do we prove this quantity here this is how you prove it there are two cases case one is x y is negative when x y is negative then negative x y is going to be great greater than zero we use equation one to show that t t is greater or equal to zero, right? Um, what if x y is positive or zero? Then we use equation number two. T must be greater than zero. So no matter what, t is always non-negative. Okay, there's another way of proving that. I find it interesting. We, we, of course, the first one, complete the square, is easier. Okay. Another example, if a is greater than zero, we want to prove that a and one over a is greater or equal to two. All right. So why don't you pause the video and uh, try to uh, prove this? Okay. The hint is that maybe you know something square non-negative, right? So try to solve it yourself. Try to prove this one. This is inequality here. All right okay now let's do it so here we want to prove this is equivalent to proof a plus one over a minus two is going to be greater or equal to zero the trick here is a and a one over a the multiplication would was going to be uh, one okay so you try to treat this as a square so this is how we, how we do it you know so a times one over a equal to one right or in this case we want the square root of a because a is positive right so a square root makes sense one over square root of a is also equal to one all right so we want to prove this quantity here is equivalent to proving a plus one over a minus two times square root of a 
1 over square root of a greater or equal to 0. And then you know that this is a square root of a square. This is a square root of a 1 over square root of a square. So this is actually the perfect square. So it's, it's actually square root of a minus 1 over square root of a greater or equal to 0. So you want to prove this is equivalent to, to this quantity, this quantity, and here this is given because the square, you know, the real number squared is non-negative, right? All the way. So this is a very um, a common, you know, trick where you have, um, you know, this cancels each other, you know, 2ab two, two uh, would, would equal to 1. All right, that's the third example. All right, so I think there are many other examples you may find. You know, fundamentally, it relies on the basic inequality that we know about. You know, about the real number, about the positive, negative, about the square. You know, being non-negative. Now, this num this example four, is another one saying we try to solve this equation here. You know, s cube, you know, sum equal to one, fourth power add up equal to one. All right. So why don't you pause the video and try to solve it yourself. All right, here, let's do some reasoning first, okay? So notice that um, we I claim that x, y cannot be too big because this is greater than zero, which means that this must be less than, less than one, right? Because it's greater than zero. Similarly, x must be less than one. So in other words, x to the fourth power, y to the fourth power must be between, uh, sorry, between zero and one, right? And, and x is also absolute value because uh, x could be negative, right? So it must be negative 1 to 1, right? And could equal, right? And y is the same thing. Okay? However, we notice that I claim that x cannot be negative because this is negative here, and then this y would be positive but it would be greater than one right but here we say y is smaller than one so this is the first conclusion right the second conclusion is that uh, uh, x must be greater or equal to zero y must be greater or equal to zero right because if x is a negative number you know this is this is how this is the reason right so if x is less than 0, then y third would equal 1 minus x third is going to be greater than 1, right? And then y has to be greater than 1, which contradicts with the, with the first, all right? So now, of course, when you, when you this equation, you can spot that when you know the solution is that if x equals 0, y equals 1, or x equal to 1, y equal 0, that's the solution, right? So we already have the two solutions, right? Two solutions here. Now, are there any other solutions? Now we know that uh, x must be positive. So in other words, x must be here, right? y must also be positive, or 0, right? I, I further claim that... Uh, when x is smaller than 1, right? Strictly smaller than 1, yeah? And and then this cannot be the case, right? So if his x is strictly smaller than 1, it's greater than 0, then what I claim is that x to the third power, and then if you time x, right, is going to be smaller than, yeah? x to the third power. Right, this number times, you know, x. This is x to the fourth power. Yeah, and then now similarly, you know, y if it's strictly right, so we add that power, right? So if add them up, is you're gonna say x to the fourth plus y to the fourth smaller than x to the third plus y to the third. So in other words, if if x is 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 not extreme value, x is between zero and one, and then then y is also between zero and one, 
and then we're going to have these two inequality here but then we are given that the both equal to one, so one less than one, which is impossible, right? So, and, and this cannot be the case. So we have proven that the only solution and here would be, that's the only solution, okay? So we, we, we prove that and this cannot be the case. Okay, again, this is, uh, we rely on the fundamental inequality or some positive versus negative property of that. All right, so there's some exercise. Now, this is very commonly used. You have probably seen this before. There are many ways of proving that. And why don't you think about it? Try to prove it. We're going to provide an answer in a separate video in a few days. And another exercise, which is more. Um, and not, 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 not as straightforward as the previous one. So here we have real numbers. We assume that uh, this satisfies this constraint. I want to, uh, you to prove that this quantity here is non-negative. Okay? So some algebra in, involved. I think this is an interesting problem. We're going to provide the answer again in a few days. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture today. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. And you can leave comments if you know the answer to these two problems. All right. See you next time. Bye.